I've been thinking about making a chocolate making video for some time on ways to make chocolate at home. S'mores is a perfect excuse to do it. I've got some Dominican Republic Zorzal. It's an organic chocolate direct trade from a bird sanctuary in the Dominican Republic. Lovely fruity flavor, awesome chocolate. Let's do it. Let's measure up some cacao. We're gonna do two ingredient chocolate today, just cacao and sugar, no cocoa butter or lecithin or anything like that for thinning or emulsifying. What it does is it makes that cacao flavor really come through at the forefront. Into the oven, roast it slow and low, 270 Fahrenheit for 40 minutes. Next, I'm gonna use a champion juicer to crack these and separate the nibs from the husk. You can use a juicer like this, or they make brewing roller mills that you use to crack the grain before brewing. Next, using a hair dryer that you've borrowed from someone, we're gonna blow off the husks. This works really well in a large wide bowl like this that's good surface area. A messy thing that you probably better do outside or in a basement, but if you got a broom and some time, separating the husks from the nibs is certainly something that can be done inside. I've made quite a mess of my space. So that's the way it goes sometimes. On to the next one. For crushing the nibs, you can use a lot of different things. It just depends how fine you want to get them, especially on a home scale. Using a mortar and pestle would be one old school way to do it. You can put them in a food processor for a couple hours, or you can use one of these. This is a refiner that's almost always used for chocolate. It's got two granite wheels that rotate over a granite slab. It has little arms that help push it in. I run this for a couple days normally. This one, just gonna do for 12 hours. These can get pretty smooth, although you'll still taste some particles. Not as good as the bigger units, but great for at home. Cost a couple hundred dollars and last a long time. Into a bowl we go. Yay! By far the hardest part of the chocolate making process is the tempering process. At home, the easiest way to do it, and I say easy in quotations, is step tempering. Basically, in a nutshell, cocoa butter, which is in cacao, it's about 50% cocoa butter, is considered polymorphic, meaning it has crystalline structure at the atomic level and it can also take on different forms of crystal structures depending on which temperatures you put it through. An example often given is something like carbon, which is polymorphic. At certain temperatures it can form graphite, soft, black, used for pencils. At another temperatures it can create diamonds, which as everyone probably knows is very different than a soft black graphite. So cocoa butter, same deal. There's several crystals that we're dealing with within the tempering process. We're mostly concerned with number four, five, and six. When we lower the temperature from a hot temperature, hot temperature, we create crystals four, unstable, and stable five. When we raise the temperature back up to a working temperature, 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, we melt out those unstable crystals four and shoot to get almost all crystal five. That's gonna create a glossy, nice snap bar, which will last a long time on the shelf and hopefully won't bloom. That being said, blooming can be caused by moisture, you know, sun will change something. Any chocolate bar, once it gets above about 85 degrees, in room temperature, out anywhere, end game. You don't want to even come near that. So storing chocolate at around room temperature of 70 degrees to lower, I mean 85 of course, I said room temperature, but you know, during this hot streak we're in, that might be reality, but in normal world, not a problem. So let's step temper this and see what we can get. Using a double boiler, I'm gonna heat it up to melt out any crystals. Anywhere from like 105 to 110 Fahrenheit is good enough for this. Once it's warmed up, 
I'm gonna grab a bowl of cool water, just cold tap water. This happens to be 66 degrees, anything around there, even 70 is fine. And I'm gonna submerge this while being very careful not to splash any water into it until I get it down to about 82. Then using warm water, I bring it back up to 88 degrees or 90 degrees working temperature, ideally. Pour it into some molds, give it a tap, and put it in the fridge until it starts to pull away, and we can get it out. All right, looks like we got success. I thought I screwed this one up like the first batch. I, my numbers were just on the high side. I stopped at like 88, 89 working temperature and it proceeded to 91 and I just stirred like crazy and it must have been right on the edge because as soon as you start heading towards 92, 93, you know, Game over. So I can tell this looks good. It's got a little bit of streaking on top, which is, I think it's just fat separation. That's totally normal. You get it on all bars, at least within the craft chocolate world that I've ever seen. And also, once you know it's done in the fridge, you see it pull away from the bottom. Also a good indication that it's in good temper. Flip it out. little bit of marring from the mold. That's totally normal, especially if you just screw up a batch before. A soft mold especially will also leave a mark, but it's still gonna taste good. Some more time, woo! Let's make some vegan marshmallows. First, I'm gonna measure out a blend of 50-50 cornstarch and powdered sugar. Get that sifted into a container just to have on hand so we can use it. Lightly oil an eight by eight baking dish. Then we're gonna put some parchment in, make a nice little fold so we can pull these out and trim up the edges just to look a little bit more pretty than I originally had done it. Give it a stir to mix it up and generously dust the crap out of that. Grab a can of chickpeas. We're gonna do some aquafaba instead of egg whites in this. Grab your stand mixer with a whisk attachment, add your aquafaba and your cream of tartar, and we're gonna whisk this till soft peaks are thereabout. Into a small saucepan, we're gonna do a simple syrup mixture of sugar and water. Heat that up, add your thermometer. We're gonna bring this up to 240 before we add it slowly, pouring down the sides to our whisk on high. Add your vanilla extract and your salt at this stage. Next, we're gonna make our agar mixture. This is in place of gelatin. In a saucepan, adding water, sugar, and our agar, giving it a whisk, cooking for about three minutes until it just starts to thicken and drizzling that in while again whisking on high. Just going down the side, making sure you don't add it too fast. Once that's all whipped up and beautiful, pour it into your prepared eight by eight pan, smooth it out with an offset spatula, and let this sit for four to six hours or overnight. Last up our graham cracker mixture, water, brown sugar, salt, cinnamon, honey, baking soda, butter, and whole wheat flour. Grab your stand mixer again, fit it with a paddle attachment, add your softened butter, your brown sugar, your honey, give that a beat, maybe lifting it up if you need to to make sure it touches the bottom. Toss in your dry ingredients. This has a nice hit of cinnamon, which is gonna add a great spice flavor. Get it going until it starts getting crumbly and add your water until it just starts to come together. This is gonna hold in the fridge, so no need for it to come clumping together. Just press it into a nice little mound, smooth it out, wrapped in something like bees wrap or plastic wrap, whack it into the fridge for an hour or more overnight, take it out. If it's been chilled for too long, what you'll see immediately is break. Yep, this needs to be Work just a little bit to make it warmer. Once it's come together and not cracking too much at the sides, roll it out with your thinnest rolling pin. I'm pricking this with a docker, but you can use a fork just as easily. I'm using a bicycle cutter just to make it consistent, but again, you can use a knife just as easily. Just get them all onto a lined sheet tray, trying to be delicate, keep their forms as nice as possible. Toss them into a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 15 minutes or so. This will depend a little bit based on the thickness of your graham crackers. You know, you're looking for a nice golden brown. If you want crisp, go a little longer. But mine stayed a little bit on the soft side, probably because they were a little too thick. But 
They tasted great in the end, and that's all that matters. So let's slice up some marshmallows with a nice set marshmallow mixture. Give it a generous dusting top and bottom with our cornstarch powdered sugar mix. Cut these up in little cubes and toss generously to coat. Uh-oh, broken one. I'm no hero, but someone's gotta take care of those things. Using a blowtorch and a skewer, Generously toast your marshmallows and add them to create your sandwich confection of graham cracker chocolate, marshmallow graham cracker, and place it in your mouth and enjoy. You're welcome. I think the first thing I notice with my s'more is when you first bite into it, there's an explosion of spice and flavor that's pretty lacking in the industrial versions. I mean, you can only get so good when you crank stuff out on a mass scale and making something small, slow, and craft is a much better way to make things, of course, but it can't be scaled up. So, craft stuff, killer, tempered chocolate, homemade graham cracker, homemade vegan marshmallows, s'mores, done right, just missing a campfire. Maybe next time. So these bars aren't in perfect temper. You can tell right away by looking at the bottoms, there's all sorts of crazy galactic kind of, hard to describe really, but you can see like particles, I guess is the best way I'd describe it, like strewn around in a fluid. Normally that wouldn't look like that. And that just takes time and practice to get used to knowing what not in temper looks like. Blessing in disguise, Let's remelt this down and retemper the chocolate. I'd say I'm glad I didn't succeed first try because more than likely people tempering chocolate at home won't either. Then again, it's tough to even know what to look for a lot of times. Oftentimes chocolate doesn't bloom until a day or two after. So, you know, I guess it's all up to the user. If you're melting it down for something like s'mores, might not be that big of a deal, but if you want to get chocolate into temper and have the nice texture, the nice snap, the glossy finish, all those things that you come to expect, then doing it over and over again until you get it is the way. Here we go.